Hi everyone, I'm Joe. Today it's time for me to do my monthly reading wrap up for October 2023. October was a good reading month. I read two interesting books. But before I get on talking about the books, I'm just going to mention that my October was also filled with an awful lot of watching a very particular program, which is a program that I watched odd episodes of many years ago and I was into it quite a bit but I never really watched it properly and that was Star Trek Voyager so at the start of October I started from season 1 and somehow by the end of the month I have actually watched all 7 seasons of it which I'm very happy about because now I can always say that I've actually watched all of Star Trek Voyager it is the only one of the Star Trek that I ever really liked I've watched odd episodes of the others and the crews of the various ships and stuff never really appealed to me that much Voyager I like that sort of combination of uh, actors and you know, people so it's one that I enjoyed and I'm very glad that I watched it for and now I can say like yes I have watched one of the Star Trek all the way through which is quite an achievement so now I'll get straight in talking about the first of the two books and the first of those is The Scholars of Night written by John M. Ford this is a got the theme of a Cold War thriller the main character is Nicholas Hansard he is an American professor in a small uh, New England University whose speciality and particular interest is the playwright uh, Christopher Marlowe the English playwright and he also has a secondary job I suppose you would call it of working for essentially this um, specific sort of intelligence gathering group and which decodes uh, you know information that they receive and try to sort of, you know keep the interests of America stable that sort of thing you know void wars the traditional sort of you know clandestine spy group type activity and he just happens to be doing some odd work here or there as his academic uh, specialities enable him to do so at the start of the book his friend and colleague is um, mysteriously dies blindly a murder and obviously that triggers off a series of events where for one thing he ends up going to the UK which is not spoiling because it's been this is about uh, an English playwright so you know he comes over here to the UK and various um, interesting events unfold and overall the theme of it is actually quite interesting because like I said it is a Cold War thriller in feel and that's what you think it's going to be but it's actually not quite what you think it's going to be it's got the theme of one and the feel of one but the actual Cold War part about you know uh, America versus Russia and then trying to do you know clandestine activities against each other to you know, be superior that's kind of not really there that much I mean it's like oh yeah you know they're against each other and that's kind of it that's it's more about this personal um event that's happening between certain characters and it's all to do also to do with a computer system let's say that is uh appropriate for obviously nowadays what with AI obviously this is not an AI system but it's thematically it's fairly appropriately well timed for when I read this and I didn't read it alone I actually buddy read this with a friend of mine Rachel known as Canadi on booktube obviously I'll link her channel although she's not doing booktube at the moment and we both enjoyed reading the book and we are both very glad that we read this together I mean we will read uh, more forward I mean we read Ford uh, previous to this and we will read more John and Ford together in the future and it, it will become and it already has become a little bit of a reading project for us to read these books together and I'm really glad that I read it back because the things that I didn't get that she did and vice versa we both got more out of it because we read it together we bounced ideas off each other and this was a really enjoyable experience I would recommend this book if you want something a little bit different with really interesting and very intelligent writing and the way because the way that Ford writes he creates the world but he creates an image in your mind but he really doesn't go into very little 
uh, very much depth at all. It all lets you try to, which you do, and it's that impressive by itself because he's actually not giving you much to create it on. He's giving you some vague pointers and saying, you know, look, this is the greater world, this is greater fields uh, and atmosphere and stuff. And then that's it. And he pulls back and carries on with the plot line. And yet you're chasing yourself, the reader, this bigger environment, which is something that not a lot of us can pull off, and he does rather well. The second book that I read, which still has a bookmark in it, but I'll get to that in a minute, is The Wind's Twelve Quarters and The Compass Road, written by Ursula Le Guin. And yes, this is one of the Yellow Point Masterworks, published by Gunners. Now, the reason that there is a bookmark halfway through the book is that this is two short story collections essentially combined into one. I have read The Wind's Twelve Quarters. Uh, Quarters, which I really enjoyed, it has some brilliant short stories in, interesting ideas, and just fantastic writing. I mean, this is Ursula Le Guin, who is, is legendary within science fiction, and obviously, I would recommend this book. The reason that I stopped there is because the second half of the book is indeed the second combined novel within it, and that is The Compass Rose. I stopped temporarily because I am currently. Uh, trying to remember to ask Rachel whether um, she wants to put in read the second book, Compass Road, because I believe she hasn't read it before, would like to reread it, so I'm going to ask her, and so by next month that will, I'll let you know whether I've already read the second book, Compass Road, with Rachel, and indeed this book will be, you know, I'll be waving this book around here next month. But the Queen's Road is always sort of imagery, interesting ideas, fantastic writing, the phone is great, and it's just something about her writing, and this is, um, each story has a little uh, preface by Ulla Green herself, that she's writing about telling you why she wrote each story, what inspired her, and indeed in some cases maybe why the story title changed, or why, what elements were added or subtracted in other publications, and it's interesting to see how these stories developed and how she developed as an author because these are over many many years these are some of the very early things she did this also um i believe especially by the compass road i am assuming but some of them are very recent relatively speaking so this is a very interesting collection and i would heavily recommend it and with that this monthly wrap up is amazingly already over so if you've read either of these or you have any suggestions on, on books based on these that you think I might like then please leave a comment. I'm always interested in getting into new author, the genre and so on. Uh, I will link these two books on Goodreads in the description box below as well as my social media as uh, always for the record and if I ever forget at some point I do actually intend to remove uh, my book depository affiliate link from my actual description at the moment it automatically is added every time I do a video but book depository sadly closed down a few months ago due to Amazon well I'm not going to talk about that because Amazon are basically the big giant and the business practices are dubious let's say basically the book um, book depository many years ago and I was still using it then their stock became terrible because they were basically trying to uh, re reduce the stock so people could go to Amazon rather than Book Depository and now they have completely wiped out Book Depository so now hoping that they'll get all the business themselves. Yeah, that's not going to work with me because I don't like Amazon for various reasons. So I will buy my books from pretty much everywhere else apart from Amazon. Actually, I don't buy anything from Amazon if you can avoid it. Occasionally, it is convenient, I'm not going to deny it's an odd thing, but I can never buy books from there. Also, as an aside, this is just literally for my own kind of a bit of a ramble at the moment. I, I always found it interesting over the years when people have mentioned about Amazon and say, oh yes, Amazon, the reason that they do well for, so well for books and, the, the, and they are so great for books is because of their prices, which are really low. And I'm like, really? The prices are really low? Um, on what books because literally every book I want to buy and there's been rather a lot over the 
last well, almost 10 years on Book 2. They're generally never the, the cheapest. They're actually more expensive than most. I can always find somewhere cheaper than them. And like every single book without fail, I can find somewhere cheaper for them. So I never quite get the appeal of Amazon. I was like, do you want to buy a book from somebody that is, is deeper than anybody else? I mean, they offer free delivery. They're the most other people. I don't know. I never quite get the appeal of Amazon. I assume maybe in other countries, Amazon might be cheaper than many other people in other countries. In the UK, they're not the cheapest. In no near, actually one of the more expensive ones. Anyway, with that little random bumble and aside said, I will end the video here. So, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in a month. Bye for now.